Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Today we are diving into the sweet and irresistible world of freshly baked sweet bread. Whether you are a seasoned baker or just starting out, this tutorial is made for you. We will take you through a step-by-step -step journey, sharing all the tips and tricks to create the perfect loaf. Imagine the aroma of warm, sweet bread wafting through your home, tempting everyone with this soft, fluffy texture and delicious taste. So roll up your sleeves, gather your ingredients, and let's start this delightful baking adventure today. Stay tuned because by the end of this video, you will be ready to impress friends and family with your own homemade sweet bread that's sure to bring smiles and warm hearts. Let's get baking. Whenever I'm making bread, I have a lot of family members here in Las Vegas. I always have to include them. So we're making a few loaves today. We start by blooming the yeast in 400 ml of warm water. I added 50 grams of maple syrup and two and a half tablespoon of dry active yeast. Then we covered it for about 10 minutes to bloom. In the meantime, the other ingredients are 150 grams of butter, a quarter cup of chia seed, a quarter cup of wild blueberry, one cup of powdered milk, one cup of maple syrup, two tablespoons of vanilla extract, three eggs, and six cups of bread flour. I started off by hooking, started off by attaching the dough hook KitchenAid appliance by lining up the the hole and attaching it, ensuring that it's secure. Then I added the bloomed yeast in the bowl. Then I added the three eggs. I added the one cup of maple syrup, one cup of powdered milk, the two tablespoons vanilla extract, one tablespoon of salt, then quarter cup of wild blueberry, and a quarter cup of chia seed. Earlier, I added the six cups of bread flour, ensuring that I got all the bloomed yeast in. I then powered up the some mixer, mixtures to mix well together and incorporate well. It really doesn't take too long for the dough to start forming in the sand mixer. I tell you, this sand mixer is a game changer. If you're ever interested in baking anything or making your own food from scratch. And it is also a very, very sexy piece of equipment and way too powerful. Anyhow, before I digress not sponsored let's get back to the job at hand once the dough started forming i added the 150 grams of butter and continued the mixing process for a while all the flour has been incorporated into the dough it is important to continue to knead the dough for a while if you're kneading the dough by hand, make sure that you're kneading the dough for at least 10 minutes to allow the gluten to develop. And in the sand mixture, continue to mix until the walls of the bowl are clear and the dough have some smooth edges. The importance of kneading cannot be overemphasized because 
it is the kneading that helps develop the gluten, which is a, a flour protein, which is necessary for trapping the gases produced by yeast, which helps in the rising of the bread. There are conditions that also affect this, things like temperature and the viability of the yeast. Here you can see how well this dough is developing and how stretchy it looks. There are a few things that can cause your dough not to rise. You have to troubleshoot some of this. Number one is the viability of the yeast. You have to make sure that the yeast is still active. This is why it is important to test a small amount of it by blooming it before you can use it. Also, water temperature can affect the dough. If the environment is too cold, the dough may not rise properly. Again, we've already talked about the importance of kneading the dough properly. Dough consistency. It is also important to make sure that the dough is not too dry or too wet, which may cause the rising of the dough, the proper rising of the dough. If the yeast is not active, it may affect the proofing of the bread as well. The strength of the dough is also very important. If your dough lacks sufficient structure, it may collapse after rising. So it is important that we make sure that we use good quality bread flour with enough protein in it. Dough tightness. If the dough is too tight, it may resist expansion. It is important for us to make sure that we knead the dough into a ball shape with smooth and taut surfaces. But you have to make sure that we don't overly tighten it. Age of the flour can be also a factor. If your flour has expired, it can cause the flour not to have enough gluten in order to have a good enough strength. Also, be careful not to add salt directly to the yeast because salt can kill your yeast. We then grease the bowl with some olive oil spray and place our dough in it after forming a round ball for the first proofing. Temperature is important here. Dough may not rise properly if it is too cold. Yeast performs best at a warm but not hot temperature, around 75 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit. If the kitchen is cold, it is important to find a warm spot or create a makeshift proofing box for your dough. I let the dough stand for about two hours, after which it's doubled in size. The length of time can vary depending on the temperature and humidity of your kitchen. After the dough has risen for two hours, I punch the dough by gently pressing my fist into the center of the dough. The goal is not to completely flatten the dough but to release the gas that has built up during the first proofing. Also, punching down the dough evenly distributes the temperature and yeast nutrients resulting in a more uniform texture and flavor in the finished bread. After the initial punch, I use my hand to fold the dough inward from side. Here you gently turn and fold the dough over onto itself from all sides. Inward folding of the dough helps expel excess gas by ensuring that large air pockets are broken down into smaller, more uniform bubbles. This helps prevent large irregular holes in the final bread. Overall, the folding of the dough after punching it down is a technique that homogenizes the dough's temperature and ingredient distribution while strengthening the gluten matrix and refining the gas bubble structure. I then cut the dough into four parts. I then covered three parts of the dough and then proceeded to roll out the first part in order to shape it into loaf. This was repeated four times by rolling each portion out with a rolling pin and getting them to shape. I made three doughs that were elongated shape, one rounded shape bread. I then made indentation on all of them, placed them in the pre-greased baking pan of different sizes, lined with parchment paper. All right, here are some of the benefits of replacing the sugar that is used in making bread with maple syrup. Maple syrup is a natural sweetener that contains small amount of vitamins, and minerals, including calcium, potassium, iron, zinc, and manganese. Whereas refined sugar provides empty calories with no essential nutrients. Although the quantities in the maple syrup are not enough to meet dietary daily requirements, 
they can contribute to a slightly more nutritious profile in your bread. Low glycemic index. Compared to refined sugar, pure maple syrup has a lower glycemic index. This means it causes a slower rise in blood sugar levels when consumed. Food with a lower glycemic index or GI can help in managing blood sugar levels, which is particularly beneficial for individuals with diabetes and also those trying to control the spikes in their blood sugar. Maple syrup contains antioxidants, which are compounds that help protect your cells from damage by free radicals in the body. The presence of antioxidants in maple syrup can add an extra health benefit, leading to reduction in oxidative stress and inflammations in the body. It is important to note, however, that maple syrup is still a sugar and contains a significant amount of calories and carbohydrates. The benefits of using maple syrup over refined sugar still does not give us a free pass to consume unlimited amount of it. It should be used in moderation as a part of a balanced diet. If this content is adding value to you, please like, share, subscribe, and comment. All right, so let's continue. After the doughs were rolled and then their shapes were formed, they were then placed in the baking pan. This is where you can decide what shape bread you want to make. You can decide to weave them by doing a different weave or just going with a traditional loaf. The loaves were egg washed. You can wash them with egg, milk, or a mixture of milk and egg or water. Depends on what you want. Then I place all the doughs in the oven for second proofing. Second proofing is very, very important in the cross quality of any bread. The final rising is particularly important for developing a good crust. So proper proofing at this stage helps ensure that the loaf will expand optimally in the oven and develop a crust that is crispy, golden, and full of flavor. Because the proofing is sensitive to temperature and environment, it's important to adjust both to make sure that you have optimal proofing. You don't want to overproof or underproof the dough. After the second proofing, the dough had risen to its maximum. I brought it out and milk washed it again just to keep the top moist. This was repeated four times for the four dough. And then in the meantime, the oven was preheated to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. After the oven had reached its determined temperature, the doughs were placed in the oven and baked for about 30 minutes till golden brown. They were then brought out, placed in a cooling rack to cool down. Using a cooling rack is a vital step in bread making that ensures the finished loaf has the ideal texture, crust, and overall quality. If the bread is not allowed to cool evenly, it can become soggy if left in the pan. To glaze the bread, I mixed one tablespoon of melted butter and one and a half tablespoon of condensed coconut milk and then used it to brush over the bread and allow to dry. This was repeated for all four loaves. Nice. We are finally here. Look at that. The best part is coming. I mean, this is the moment we have been waiting for. The taste test. Look at how soft that bread looks. It is amazing. And my son could not wait to taste it. So as I was trying to taste it, he says he wanted his. So here we go. And he concurred. It was one of the best bread. Now, my turn to taste it. Mmm, this is so good. Hey. I'm challenging everyone to try this. Post your own, put a comment on your experience, send pictures, and to recap, we gathered the ingredients. We mixed them in the same mixer when the dough had formed, we proofed the dough. Then we punched out the air out of the dough. We rolled the dough. We divided the dough. We then made the loaves cut them, milk wash them, second proof them, and bake. If you found value in this content, please like, subscribe, and share. This is Dr. Okeke. Thank you.